Act 4, Stockton and Larry et Leon. Stockton was home to the Filipinos of the 1920s and 1930s who worked in the asparagus fields of California's San Joaquin Valley. They harvested asparagus from late February through May. Then it was on to the salmon canneries of Alaska. The cannery work season lasted only during the two to three months of summer, but fit well with the asparagus season in California. Alaska was the one place during the summer months where Filipinos in America could get a job en masse outside of farm work. They were called Alaskeros. Stockton, California is the seat of San Joaquin County, one of the major asparagus growing areas of the state and country. If you are Filipino, the next time you eat asparagus, remember the thousands of Filipinos who picked asparagus for a living in the 1930s. Unlike today, when most of the farm workers harvesting crops in California are Mexicans or others from Central America, Filipinos made up the majority of farm workers before World War II. The 1930 census reports 45,000 Filipinos in the U.S., of which 56%, or 25,000, worked in the agricultural fields of San Joaquin County in California. Stockton was home to Little Manila in the 1920s, where Filipinos felt safe and at home. Not all of Stockton, however, was safe or home for Filipinos. North of Main Street was off limits. A widely circulated photo of a Stockton hotel door in the 1920s displayed a sign saying, positively no Filipinos allowed. South of Main Street Filipino American pioneers built their own community called Little Manila. They set up businesses and organizations of all kinds to meet their own needs. Restaurants, hotels, grocery stores, and barbershops. If Filipinos were discriminated against in town, they were downright abused in fields. In Little Manila, the Manons met, organized, and coordinated the actions of the Filipino farm workers to defend themselves from abuses by the farm owners. The Ilocana, the Ilocana word Manon means elder brother, Kuya in Tagalog, Goyang in Kampamangan. They were paid low wages when they protested their poor living conditions in the labor camps. Their water and electricity was shut off by the farm owners. Asparagus Strike of 1939 On April 7, 1939, Good Friday, during the height of the asparagus season, 7,000 Filipino asparagus workers went on strike to protest a recent pay cut. Not one Filipino went out to the asparagus fields. The asparagus workers formed a union called the Filipino Agricultural Labor Association, or FALA. Since they lived in company camps on the farms, the striking workers had no place to stay and no food to eat. The union and the Filipino community got together and asked the women of the community to work to cook the union and the Filipino community got together and asked the women of the community to cook for the workers. They cooked big kettles of chicken stew for the striking workers. The striking workers won. All 258 growers signed an agreement guaranteeing unprecedented workers' rights. This success in the asparagus industry prompted other victories in the celery, Brussels sprouts, and garlic fields from San Mateo to San Benito counties. By 1940, there were nearly 30,000 FALA members. Delano Grape Strike of 1965 to 1970 What do we know about the Delano Grape Strike of 1965 to 1970? The short answer is that the Mexican grape pickers were being paid $1.40 an hour, and the Filipinos $1.10 an hour. In 1965, Filipino farm workers in Delano, California, great country, 
were paid $1.10 per hour, and temporary workers brought in from Mexico $1.40 per hour. Led by Larry Iglion, Philip Veracruz, and Pete Velasco, the workers voted to strike against the gross disparity in pay. But the Delano growers took a hard line against the strikers and called in non-union Mexican laborers as replacements. So Larry Ipleon went to get help from Cesar Chavez, head of the mostly Mexican National Farm Workers Association, NFWA. After initial misgivings, Chavez agreed to help. Eight days after the Filipino strike vote, the Mexican workers voted unanimously to join the strike. News of the Filipino farm workers' strike reached San Francisco and spurred Filipino community leaders in the Bay Area, led by Emil Heredia and Alex Escalamado, to set up food caravans and... <clears throat> sorry. News of the Filipino farm workers' strike reached San Francisco and spurred Filipino community leaders in the Bay Area, led by Emil Heredia and Alex Esclamado, to set up food caravans to bring canned foods to Delano to support their cababayans in the picket lines. This new alliance between Filipino farm workers and Filipino professionals developed into the Filipino-American Political Association, FAPO. In 1970, when Ipleon was national president, FAPO had active chapters in 30 cities throughout the U.S. The Filipino Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee, AWOC, of Ipleon and the NFWA of Chavez merged to form the United Farm Workers of America, UFW. AFL-CIO, with Cesar Chavez as executive dis director and Iglion second in command. The alliance mobilized a nationwide boycott of Delano grapes. Finally, after five years, in 1970, the growers finally gave in. The striking Filipinos and Mexicans got wage increases, a medical plan for farm workers, five clinics, a daycare center, and a school. It was a hard-won victory. The American Community Survey of 2019 lists 29,000 persons of Filipino origin live in Stockton, but only a couple of buildings in Little Manila survived. The rest has given way to progress and new construction. <clears throat> Today, the name Cesar Chavez is associated with the success of the Grape Strike of 1965. Forgotten by the national media is the name Larry Itleon. It is up to the Filipinos to remember Larry Itleon's name, broadcast it, and celebrate his contribution to the rescue of Filipino and Mexican workers abused by Delano, California grape growers of the 1960s. On October 25, 2015, in commemoration of Larry Itleon's birthday in 1913, California Governor Jerry Brown signed a bill to establish Larry Itleon Day. On the same day in 2019, Governor Gavin Newsom issued a proclamation to declare the day as Larry Itleon Day in the state of California, securing his mark in American history. <laughs>